Hi, welcome back to the garden. Uh, in late March, this camellia behind us here has been in flower since probably late January actually. These lovely rich red flowers, you might be thinking, wow, what's wrong? Camellia looks good. Well, we have a problem here, and it's quite a, quite a common problem here in the UK with our camellia. It's the sooty mould. Let's go and have a closer look. There you go. So uh, this uh, has taken a bit of a um, bit of a battering over the last few years. This camellia, we've kind of built a new bed around it, and um, so we've kind of raised the soil around it. That might have um, stressed it. We've given it a bit of a prune. It was all leaning out of place, so we've had to kind of tie it back. There, you can see some wires and things in there. But it's been flowering well. But last autumn, I noticed that um, noticed that some of the um, uh, some of the leaves were curling over and a couple of them are going yellow and I couldn't quite work out uh, what was going on. I should have guessed really because what can happen is that um, in the autumn when we get those mild wet autumns here in the UK um, uh, that's the perfect conditions after that summer's sun of kind of soft growth, perfect conditions for the scale insect to, um, to come along and that scale insect you, you have to look very carefully to find them, there's a curled over leaf there wouldn't be surprised if there's some underneath. Yes, there are. There we are. You can just see them there on the um, on the leaf. Can you see them there? Um, so it just looks like a little brown splodge on the leaf. That's a technical word there, splodge. Yeah, I learned that at college. Um, maybe a millimetre long, something like that. And um, they suck the juice out of the plant and gradually, you know, take the goodness out of the plant. But here's the thing. They secrete this kind of sticky... Um, secretion which goes over the leaves um, and it's kind of see-through you won't you won't see it really you might just see a slightly sticky shiny surface to the leaf and that shiny surface attracts that sticky surface attracts this the sooty mold dun 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 there we are you can see it there on some of these leaves this kind of black sooty mold and um, that's what you probably see first, there you, are, you can see it on that leaf just there, um, and that more often than not has been caused by these um, uh, scale insects which are living underneath the, uh, the leaf. And uh, so what we need to do, rather than just spraying with a fungicide to kill off the, um, uh, the fungus, you need to get to the kind of the root of the problem, that's always the case with plants isn't it, uh, and you need to kill off the scale insects. Um, and I know there's a lot of kind of differing opinions about use of chemicals and so on, but what I've found is that um, most effectively I, like, I need to use a, um, a systemic insect insecticide, which will be absorbed into the system of the plant through the leaves, be absorbed into the system, and then um, that'll kill off not only any scale insects that are there now, but it'll help um, prevent any further infection. And then once you've done that, you can leave it a month and spray with a fungicide if you wanted to, to, um, to get rid of the sooty mold. But to be honest, once you've got rid of the, um, um, the scale insects, which provide the food, that sticky secretion for the, uh, for the um, sooty mold, you will have won the battle. But just to clean it up, I'll probably use some um, uh, fungicide to kill off the sooty mold. So this is in spring, as you can see, because the camellia is in flower, and that'll, that'll put us right, really, for the summer. But then what I'm going to do is make a little note in my diary, probably around about October time, I'm going to come and spray, maybe September, spray with that insecticide again, that systemic insecticide, to prevent the, uh, the reinfection of the scale insect in the autumn. And then we should be sorted. So there we go, that's, that's the, um, uh, the way that we, uh, we address the, the, the problem of sooty mould and scale insect on our rather lovely camellia that's been... Um, it's had a wasp, I think, on there, isn't it? So, uh, there we go. So, with that in mind, when you do spray uh, when you do spray any chemicals, the important thing is, A, follow the manufacturer's instructions uh, to the letter. Protect yourself, you know, with um, protective clothing. I go and have a shower as soon as I spray. Make sure you don't spray in a windy day. Um, you know, don't breathe in the spray. Um, and leave it till the end of the day, in the evening, uh, while it's just barely light, so that the bees have stopped working. And that's the main, the main reason that a lot of people are concerned about the use of chemicals, is to protect the bees. So, if you spray at the end of the day, um, when the bees have returned to their nest and then by the time the bees come out again um, the chemical will have been uh, absorbed um, 
And the other little tip there is also if you're spraying after a dry spell, um, it might be worth watering the, um, watering the soil um, maybe a day or so before you spray because the, um, the, the, the system of the plant is, is, um, is more active after, um, after watering. Um, so that'll, that'll improve the absorption of the, um, the chemical, so they say. Hope that makes sense. Any questions, um, please let us know via um, the YouTube comment section. Thank you very much. Have a good day.